All right, guys, good morning. CodaBoy32 here. Check it out. I'm Sweden having a cup of coffee in my Farmageddon cup. And for you guys who don't know, it is 8 o'clock here, which means it is 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, your time. Well, anyway, it's been a kind of nice divide. It's been a good separation from what's going on in the day-to-day -day grind in the United States. But me being the person I am, I am constantly... Uh, my wife's like, get off the phone, get off the computer, because I'm always looking to see what's going on. And it amazes me with a, a woman like Maxine Waters losing her mind as she is doing these days. Unbelievable. To be even called out by her own party, but to be supported by MSNBC, if that tells you anything. So in any case, it, it's pretty interesting. So a friend of mine named Kevin A. And Kevin, thank you very much for sending me this article, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, it's from NPR, and basically the title of it is The Gun Registration Paper Trail is Long and Convoluted. And it would it would kind of steer you into, I always look at the titles, because you can always tell who's doing what and maybe pushing the agenda, try to leading in the viewers. And indicating that the gun registration paper trail is long and convoluted lends to believe that, well, they want a gun registration, and the one that's existing now is long and convoluted, which it, it is, and it is intended to be so. Guys, right now what has to happen, there's about 60,000 FFLs in our country. And each time an individual walks into a gun store or a gun dealer or somebody who's a licensed FFL, they have to fill out what is called a Form 4473. And it's basically that thing you fill out is, yes, I am who I am. You have the option to put your social security number on there. Uh, have you violated any of these rules? Or are you in in violation? And basically what happens, unless you've already gone through a pre-background check, like some states require, the, the dealer has to call the FBI. The FBI confirms that your name is not on any no-go gun list, and they can sell you the firearm. So, the 4473. That, at the end of the day, is the form we are talking about. Because what happens to that form? Everybody says, well, you're basically registering your guns because they're on a 4473. Not so. Because, here's the thing. If your name is not on a no-gun buy list, basically within 24 hours, that search is gone. It just disappears. Okay? And that's by law. It has to. And this is in an, in an effort to not have what they call a gun registration. So the the proof or the evidence that you that that dealer called into the FBI to ask if you you were not on a no gun buy list and you were not and you were allowed to buy a gun evidence of that phone call and that search is gone okay so they don't have any evidence at the federal level that you bought the gun the only evidence that anyone has that you have purchased the gun is at the local dealership at the dealer. I say dealership because it sounds like a car. So basically what happens is that FFL has to maintain a hard copy, not a digital copy. There are no digital copies ever kept anywhere. And this is also part of the reasons why they want to protect the gun owner, but also in a way <clears throat> they have a record of, or what I call a, uh, a, a tracking record of where this firearm has gone. So basically what happens is you purchase it from the dealer that you then can do whatever you want with it. And what really needs to happen is if you sell it to somebody else down the line, for your own safety, you probably need to have some type of record with that person's signature on it. A lot of people say, no, we shouldn't do this. And you know what, guys, here's the thing. People who will say in this video, any type of background check is a, is a, is a strike against our second amendment. Totally agree with you. But unfortunately, we're faced with a situation right now that if you take a firearm that you legally purchased and your name is on a 4473 and you turn around and you sell it to Joe Schmo and at a private sale in a Walmart parking lot and he goes and he shoots something up, guess who the last person who owned that firearm is? You. If they find it. Because here's what happens. The ATF is called in. The FBI is called in. They got a firearm. They got some serial numbers. They will call the manufacturer. The manufacturer has to keep a record on who he sold that firearm to. It's kind of like the distributor's FFL or a dealer's FFL. So they're going to say, well, I sold it to Southeastern Gun Distributors or say Classic Firearms. So they will next call Classic Firearms. Hey, Classic Firearms, we got a firearm up here that uh, is 
well, it's been used in a, in a, in a violent crime. We need to figure out where it went. And he's going to look up his records because he has to keep a record for 20 years, no less. In the event that he goes out of business or, well, in the event he goes out of business, <laughs> less than a 20-year period of time, he has to box up his records and send them to the ATF because they have to have them on site. At no time, though, listen, at no time is that record ever able to be digitized or put into a computer where it's searchable. Because what does that recommend? It says that is a registry. That is a registration of firearms and a registration of names of people who have firearms. So right now, you're being protected because the dealer keeps a name of who he sold it to. That distributor or that dealer keeps a name and a uh, information of who he sold it to so basically what they have to do to atf is they got to call the manufacturer the distributor the dealer and the dealer has got a contact number and your information and next thing you know they're going to call you because that's how they track it down it's not simple as oh we're going to put it in a computer oh it's a last owner was so 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 anyway that's it that's how a 4473 works and that is how we are protected against the national registry of firearms so for people who have always wondered how this works that's it now here's one thing that i would definitely suggest and i did a video a little while ago documenting all the firearms on my own list i registered them with myself because what happens is if you don't have that list and you have a firearm stolen from your house, the most embarrassing thing in the entire free world. Now, getting broken into and a victim of a crime is not an embarrassing act, but not knowing what was stolen or the serial numbers that were associated with it, that's embarrassing. So always know the serial numbers of your personal firearms. Always find out and keep a track of who you let that firearm go down the road to because you're ultimately, at the end of the day, the tracking numbers, everything tracks back to the last guy who owned it. And you need to have evidence of that you have let it go so anyway guys enforce the laws that are on the books folks we already have a form of registration it's the 4473 it's just not digitized and it's a pain in the ass to have to go through and find out who actually owns that firearm and that's the way it's designed to protect you me and them and the government so there's all equal participation and protection there um i hope this makes sense because uh, there's a lot of people out there who want a national registration of firearms, especially in New Jersey, New York, California. It's BS. The information's out there. They just want it easy. So that being said, take a look at the article. I'm going to post it down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I thought it was pretty good, and I really appreciate Kevin for sending that in. Guys, I'm going to be back hard at it here in about another month. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, about another week. And... uh I'm, I'm enjoying my vacation, but I'm going to enjoy getting back, I think, even more. Just go to Boy32. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform, 24-7 for our freedoms. Freedom's not free. Check this out, man. You got soft bread with fish pate and a big fly and some shrimp. Fresh squeezed apple juice and coffee in a farm again cup. Let's go to Boy32. You guys have a great day. I'm out of here.